Hey there Dev Squad Vertus here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 4 Endless Runner tutorial series. In today's video we're going to be showing you how you can set up your gesture controls for swiping left, right, up and down. These gesture controls are going to work on both PC and on a mobile device whether that is Android or iOS. I have tested this and it is all going to be working. Now we're going to be testing this inside of the editor viewport, however we can use the cursor to simulate those gesture controls and if they do work within our editor's viewport it will work on your mobile as well. So without further ado let's go ahead and dive straight into it. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is set up a simple little input within the project settings so that we can do this properly. So go to edit project settings in the top left and then go to your inputs. Within here you want to create a new action mapping and give this the name finger1. And then for the actual input for that action mapping you just want to search for touch1. So touch and then a space and then one and then from there you're good to go and we can start using this within our code. Now this input is simply just going to be an event, it's not going to be for swiping in a specific direction, it's more just for when someone touches the screen sort of with a gesture control like touch. Now all of the actual code for detecting when they're swiping and in which direction is going to be within the third person character so you want to go ahead and open that up. Now within here what I've done already is created a couple of variables. The first one is a boolean with the name is pressed. If you haven't got that already just go ahead and press plus variable and then with this just give it the name is pressed, compile it and make sure your default value is set to untrue and then compile it. What I've also created is two 2D vectors, one called touch start 2D and then the other one is touch end 2D and these are just vector 2Ds and if you want to create one of these just go ahead and create a variable and then from the variable type if you go ahead and type in vector in the top right hand corner within the details panel you can choose the option for vector 2D. The default values for both of these vector 2Ds is equal to 0. So you don't need to put any information in this, we are just going to be using these to hold the information for the start location of our swipe and the end location of our swipe so that we can run a little bit of maths in between to detect which way they are swiping. So once we've done that we can actually start working on our code. Now what I'm going to do is find some empty space within our main event graph tab within our character blueprint. Now at the very start what we're going to do is create an input action for that finger 1, the input that we created for when we touch the screen. So right click and type in input action and just look for your finger 1. So I'm going to type in input action finger 1 and we've got this. Now what we're going to be doing as soon as they press it we are going to be changing our is pressed variable to true. So drag out from that set is pressed to true. And then once we've done this what we're going to be doing is setting our touch start 2D vector equal to the location on the screen that it's just touched. Now the way that we're going to get this is by getting the player character and then with the player character we are going to get input touch state if I can spell that right so uh, sorry set input uh, there we go let's have a look so input touch state we should be able to find it so what I'm going to do is get touch or get input sometimes they do change the names on these unfortunately so it's just one of those things so let me try that again so get input and let's see if I can find it at the moment I can't find it and the reason for that is because I'm using the character player instead you want to be using the controller get so get player controller rather than character it's very easy to confuse the two of those so get player controller and then set input touch or get input touch state rather 
And then with this, for the finger, uh, finger index, we're just gonna set this to one because it's the first finger. And then with this, what we can do is get information from the screen where you've just touched. And that's being given to us in the form of an X and Y value. So up, down, left, and right, all in 2D. So what we're gonna be doing with these two values is we are going to convert this into a vector 2D that we can work with. So drag out from location X and make this a vector 2D. So X should go into X and Y should go into Y. Now with this value, you wanna hook this straight up into your touch start. And what this is gonna do now is when you press that finger down, it is going to make your touch start variable equal to the actual start location of where you've touched on your screen. Now, what we're gonna have to do is when you release that, the touch, we're gonna set is pressed to untrue. So that way the engine knows whether or not the screen is currently pressed down. Now, what we're gonna do from here is we are going to drag this out and bring it into a do once node. With this do once node, we're gonna join this execution pin from set is pressed to reset. And you'll see what I'm using this for in just a moment. Now, what I do need to add to the sequence is an event tick. Now, we've already got one in our scene here. So what I'm gonna do is delete this event tick. We'll come back to that in a moment go all the way up to the top and add this in here. So event tick, and then from there, we're gonna add a sequence node. For then zero, we are gonna run a check to see whether or not is pressed is true. If it is true, we are then going to run another branch check. And with this branch check, what we're gonna be doing we're gonna be checking the length of that to make sure it is a swipe. And the way we're gonna do this is out from our 2D vector for the start location, we are gonna do vector minus vector. And what we can do with this is this value here should be going into your B input, and then the first input should be your start. So get a reference to your start, Hook this into the A, just like that. And then what we're gonna do is convert this into a vector 2D length. And this is gonna allow us to have a float value, which we can then run a quick check to see whether or not the two locations are different. And this is how we're gonna differentiate it from a tap, because if it's a tap, then it's gonna be in roughly the same location. If it's not, it's gonna be there's gonna be a slight difference. And the threshold for this that we're gonna use is 100. And that is gonna go straight up into our branch over here. So what we're doing essentially is checking to see whether or not this is a swipe or a tap. With this, if that is true, we're gonna go into the do once and this is where we're gonna start running our, uh, our code to check to see which direction this swipe is gonna be in. So the way we're gonna do this is after we've got our do once, we're gonna drag out and we are gonna set touch end 2D vector. Now with this, what we're gonna be doing is getting that value from before and hooking it up straight in here. And then I'm also gonna move all of my code up to make sure I've got some space. And then with this, we are gonna run a couple of branch checks. And this is where we're gonna determine whether or not it's a left, right, up, or down swipe. So the first one is a branch to see whether or not a float is greater than another float. Now, what we need to do is get a reference to the start and the finish so we can start working out the differences and in which, uh, in which directions it is. Now, what we're gonna do is vector minus vector to start with and join these over so we can get the difference. And then we are gonna break this into float values that we can work with and move these along a little bit. 
Now for these two inputs over here, we are going to be checking for absolute floats. So just go ahead and copy and paste that absolute value and hook this up into the X and the Y and then into your pins over here for A and B. And that is all good for that bit. What we're going to do then with this branch, if it is true, we are going to run another branch. And this branch is just to check to see whether or not this is going to be left or right. As we've already sort of differentiated between the two types, left and right or up and down. So with this branch, what we're going to do is we are going to do a little check. So with this, what we're looking for is float greater than float. And we're going to get our X into here. We're going to get another one of these little nodes and the Y into here. Now for this first one, hook this up into our branch up at the top here. And now if this is true, what we're going to do is print string to say left. And this is essentially our event for our left swipe. For the second one, we are going to do another print string and this is going to be right. Moving on from here, over at the false of the second to last branch, what we're going to be doing is adding in another branch. Now this is going to be for printing the up value and the down value. So go ahead and just add these in. So up and down and hook these up into your true and false. The condition for this is going to be your last little check down here at the bottom. And with that, we should be good to go. Now, if you compile our code from the start, we shouldn't have any errors and we should be able to test this. So if you go into your level, which is going to be your runner level, if you haven't got it open already, you can test this. Now, you won't be able to move forwards because we did disconnect our event tick. But when we swipe left, you can see in the top left hand corner, it is saying left. If we swipe right, it is swiping right. Swipe up, it is swiping up and down. So you can see quite clearly that our swipe controls are working as they should. It's identifying the different types of swipes. Now, if it's not working, first of all, you want to check your code. Secondly, there is a option within the inputs to use the mouse for the touch within your project settings. Make sure this is ticked, otherwise it won't let you do what you're trying to do. So what I'm going to do now is take a moment to show you how to fire off the functionality for moving between the lanes, jumping and the downward movement with these new swipe controls that we've just set up. So go back into your third person character and we've got these four controls. For the left, what we're going to do is find the code for that. And over here, we have got this. Now we've got the key bindings for this. What I'm going to be doing is dragging out the functionality for this. So get the execution pin for the start of the set new lane for the left, drag this up and find our print string for left. Go down again, do the same thing for right. And because I'm not breaking any links while I'm doing this, it's still going to work the way it should have done before. So if I compile this, if I restart the game, I can move left with my keyboard and my mouse, or I can also now swipe left and right as if we were playing on mobile. Now we still need to set up our jump and our downward movement. That's really straightforward. So get our roll slash lower, get the execution pin from the start and just find your downward movement and hook that up. Moving on from there, we have got our jump. What we're going to be doing is simply getting our jump event or jump function and hooking this up into our up hit compile and we should be able to test this so we can jump up uh, so we can swipe up and you can see that's making us jump and then we can also swipe down to bring him back down to the ground immediately swipe right swipe left 
all of this is now working. So what I'm going to show you how to do now is lastly, get the player moving forwards again as we did change our event tick, which was controlling that forward movement. Open up your third person character and then go to your movement input. Now notice here, we've got a broken link. This is where we had our event tick in before. Grab that, go up to the start of your code at the very top where we made the event tick and the sequence node. Hook that up into your then zero. Hit compile, hit play, and what you will notice now, you're moving forwards exactly as you was before. And from there, you now have full functionality for swiping left, right, up and down. And if you was to bring this onto your mobile phone, whether that's Android, iOS, it is going to be fully playable. Anyway guys, that's pretty much everything for swipe controls. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you have got any issues, just re-watch the video, go backwards, take a look at my code and check that little setting that I mentioned. But for now guys, once again, thanks for watching, stay awesome, keep creating. Your boy Vertus, signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.